Williams, and this is practical sewing for Brother and Baby Lock machines. These are amazing machines, and they will do a tremendous amount of things. I'm primarily a garment sewer, and so basically everything that you need to know about garment sewing pretty much is at least introduced in this class. Okay, so let's start out with practical stitching class two. Talk about seams first of all. Seams should be secure and lie flat when pressed open or to the side depending on the type of seam. Seams should not pucker or pull. Should follow the grain of the fabric so they'll hang straight. This is extremely important when you're cutting out garments. That grain line on the pattern piece, that's not a suggestion. Unless it's a bias, Thing and they'll have a diagonal line if it's biased. You need to either have it straight grain or cross grain because otherwise your seams are not going to be straight. For best results, some fabrics require specialty seams using particular stitches and techniques and that's what we are going to be looking at. Now typically for garments you're going to use polyester thread. And you need a balanced tension, so that means you need to have the same weight thread on the top and on the bottom. If you have lighter weight fabrics, you might want to shorten the stitch length. And all those scraps that you have left over when you cut out the garment, what I do is take and kind of clean them up a little bit and have them sitting by my machine. And when I change stitches, or if I want to see how a seam is going to do, I'll use that same, you know, one of those scraps and, and check it out first because I hate, I love, don't mind doing stuff, I hate to redo stuff and I hate a seam ripper. So I found that if I'll take a couple of minutes and use those scraps, I do much less of, of that kind of thing. Now, sample number one is a stretch seam. This is a very elastic seam for swimsuit and fabrics that contain lycra. And now even a lot of the denim, you know, fabrics that you get are gonna have a little bit of lycra in there. Use also to seam curve edges that receive a lot of stress, such as the crotch area of pants. I've started doing this with a lot of the costumes I make. Primarily I sew for guys. And as if you've ever sewn for guys, you know they're they're pretty hard, can be pretty hard on clothes. So I use this stretch seam. I usually double stitch the crotch and I'll use this stretch seam in uh, the curved part of the crotch. Use ball pointer stretch needles on mitts. And if you've taken um, the sewing one class, you learn a lot about the needles. The ball point needles actually push the fabric aside instead of you know going through the fibers because some of the knits will run. Remember pantyhose, when everybody wore pantyhose and one little pick and you have a run? Well, some of the knit fabrics will do that too. So that's why you want to use um, a ball point or a stretch needle on those. Now, um, when you start sewing, because knits are so soft, they will be pushed down into the machine if you don't make allowances for that. And there are two ways that you can do that. Um, important to start sewing about a quarter inch from the fabric edge or place a piece of tearaway stabilizer under the fabric edge since the needle easily pushes stretchy fabric into the stitch plate. I prefer putting a piece of tearaway stabilizer in the corner and you have a piece of that. Look at your, your sample pack. You've got a little piece of tearaway stabilizer. Um, in your sample pack. And what you'll do is when you start your seam, you're going to have this at the, the corner, put it on the bottom, because basically if it goes under, if it goes under first, it's gonna keep it from pushing down in the hole. I prefer this to starting in a quarter of an inch, just in case, you know, you don't want it to unravel at the beginning, even though you're probably gonna have another seam on top of it but um, this tearaway stabilizer, and we're gonna be using this piece over, over and over again too. Now, um, also we're gonna change the defaults on this. You will use the J foot. If the fabric uh, stretches, reduce the pressure foot, presser foot, can't say that, pressure foot pressure if available. Okay, now let me check my 
notes on here. Uh, a stretch needle has an anti-static coating. Now make a note of this though, this is very important. We're gonna change the default settings. Go to stitch width of two and stitch length of three. Which, are we gonna, what? We're gonna, okay. Stitch are we gonna use? Okay, we're gonna use the stretch stitch. See the picture up here that looks kind of like a saw blade? That's the stitch we're using. Now, um, it was in folder one, utility folder one. It was stitch six on my drain machine. So I don't know if it may not be quite in the same place, but find the one that looks like a saw blade. One six right there. Okay, and it tells you, if you look on the screen, it tells you which foot to have on too. Pay attention to that. Which okay? Oh, that's the drain. This is the drain machine. And it's utility folder, the um, utility stitch and the folder one, stitch number six. But again, I found if you'll match the pictures, if you'll match the pictures on your PowerPoint, that's how you can find it for your particular machine. Don't forget to put the edges together because we're going to do left, left over right. This is a flat joint seam. This is good for thick fabrics like uh, fleece or terry cloth. If you were, if you decide you want a new terry cloth robe, have you priced those things? They're pretty expensive. And then I wasn't that impressed with the last time I looked at them, I wasn't that impressed with the construction or the fabric anyway. You know, we're uh, we're fabric snobs, you know, seamstresses I've noticed are fabric snobs and you know, that's okay, that is okay. So let's talk about sample three, the flat joining seam. is a good seam, like I said, for thick fabrics such as terry cloth and polar fleece. Now, remember to remove the seam allowance from one of the fabric edges, otherwise your project will be larger than intended. So what you can do when you're cutting it out, just go in about a seam width and cut it that much smaller, or you could split the difference if you wanted to, I guess, and take off about a quarter of an inch off each, you know, the front and the back piece if you wanted to. Now. I tried to get around this next step where it says use fabric glue or basting tape to hold the layers from shifting while sewing. And I had it pinned like crazy and it was fine down to the, I had to pull that pin out to sew to the very end and then it went like this. So you need to do this, unfortunately, um, because the, I guess because it's thick, those little fibers are gonna fight staying on top of each other and flatten out. Now, um, we are using the J foot. Look at your stitches up here. This is what you're looking for. One of these, this one goes over basically one step. This one goes over half again as much. So it depends on the look that you want. This is the sample that I did What's the for it. Number? Uh, 119 or 120? 119? Uh-huh. 119 or 119? Right, let me see. I think it's 118 and 119 on the yeah, on our, dream machine. Yeah, on the is the 119 and 120. Okay. 119 and 120. Okay, and if you if you use the same color thread, it pretty much won't show, but if you use a contrasting thread, you know, it's going to show up. But you're gonna have left over right. Now, what you wanna do is to make sure it's gonna go over that edge. You can use length of 3.5 or you can use your default. Make a note though, left overlaps right. You want to make sure the needle hits the raw edge of the fabric. And basically, you're going to sew it twice. You're going to sew down one side, flip it over, and sew down the other side. Now, to make sure it hits the edge. The top one is not going to be. Okay, now you're, you're not. Sample two is the overlock seam. The overcasting foot prevents the seam from rolling and not being pushed inside the machine as it is sewn. It's used to attach ribbing or sewing seams with nets. And like I said, it simulates um, what a serger will do. 
Again, with nets, you're going to be using the ball point or the stretch needle. What um, size? What size? What size needle? Um, I would say just go mid-range if you're, you've got a mid-weight net, you know, what, an 80, something 80, like that? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. something like that. Okay, uh, let's see what extra notes I have on this overlock seam. Again, anytime you use nets, get in the habit of using that little corner of tearaway stabilizer at the beginning. We do need to change the default though. Make a note about this. Stage, change the stitch width to four. So we're gonna stay on the same stitch? Um, we're gonna look, this is what you look for. One of these. Now in the dream machine, it is utility folder one, number 16. Okay, but change your stitch width to four, your stitch length to three. Stitch width to four, stitch length to three. Stitch length to three and the width to four. Mm -hmm. Right. Now we're about to put a piece of ribbing onto a curve as if you were doing a, a t-shirt and you wanted to put a ribbed knit collar, I guess we would say on it. Now, when we do this, we let the base materials show because, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ribbing and you're gonna fold it with wrong sides together and then you're gonna fold it in half lengthwise. Then take your curve piece and you're gonna line it up so that it's a little bit inside. You've got to let your base material show. You've got a little, a little bit of the white show. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, if you had it lined up, it could be doing this on the back. You know, you could be sewing, not even catching the white. Okay, so have a little bit of the base showing. And then again, you're gonna put your tearaway stabilizer on the bottom. So you're gonna start sewing like this. At first now, you're going to just stitch to a few stitches to anchor it. Once you have it anchored, then what you're gonna do is stretch the dickens out of this ribbing. You can stretch it a whole lot. And of course, you've also got a curve, but look what you can do. You can flatten out this curve. You can straighten out, make a kind of a fold on the bottom and you can make this go flat. See what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You can just ease it along and just kind of fold it up as you need to. But just make sure you don't stretch the bottom part, you stretch the ribbing. Okay, let's see if there's anything else that I need to tell you. Um, you can put the edge of the fabric at the toe guide on the foot front. Now we just changed feet and this, you know, like I told you, I recommend that when you, before you start sewing, when you change to a new foot, take your hand wheel and always rotate that hand wheel towards you, but rotate it through one full cycle to make sure that you've got everything set up correctly for your stitch, your foot and everything because this is the one that um, I broke a needle and nicked my bobbin case on because I did not have it set right. Okay, so yeah, you know, put, let's do this. It's gonna be easier to do. Threads through together, threading the machine. Now, when you get down here, this is where they separate. I can get them separated. And the one that's gonna go into the left needle goes behind the guide. Get it behind the guide. Probably need to be letting you do this. Okay. And then you'll put it through the left needle, okay. and this one is going to go in front of the guide, uh -huh. and then through the right needle. In front of the guide. Mm -hmm. Just leave it loose like this. Yeah. Okay. And then you're just going to 
just going to thread. You can't use the needle threader. No. This is just going to take a minute, and you're going to have to thread it, thread okay. it by hand. Look at what we've already done. We found the twin needle on your machine, and we marked it for the twin needle. And this is a straight stitch. A lot of them will only allow certain stitches, but this is just a straight stitch with your J foot and we're using for the double needle or twin needle. Now, this simulates a cover stitch, which is on a lot of garments. I happen to be wearing one that has where it's got the two lines of stitching. This was done on a cover stitch machine, but you can simulate it. Basically, you've got two threads sewing on top, and your bobbin is gonna go back and forth and connect those on the bottom, but it's gonna look like a cover stitch. It's excellent as a hem for knits. Now we're using a two millimeter double or twin needle. We enter, put that in the machine and turn on the twin needle safety feature if available. Now we've already threaded the machine with two threads on top and again, do not use the built-in needle threader because it will break it if you try it because the needles are not in the correct position. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. Um, so slowly, the right side of the fabric is up, so you can't see where the edge of that um, fabric is on the bottom, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. The stitch is a straight stitch, the needle at the center position. The stitch width and stitch length is the default, or you can use a three-step zigzag like you see up here. Straight stitch or a zigzag stitch. Now the zigzag makes a, a nice look with the double needle too. If you're using knit, as always, we're gonna use a piece of tearaway stabilizer. Now you have a sample that hat of a knit <coughs> that has the hem pressed up and it's also got stitch witchery to hold it up. <coughs> now here's the tricky part because you're going to be sewing on top and you're not going to be able to see it. We don't have a double needle in here. <coughs> but what you'll do is flip the fabric back so that the edge of the fabric is going between the twin needles. <coughs> Now, there are a couple of other things I need to tell you. 